Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start talking about connecting your MIT App Inventor app to a web API. There are four things that we can do here. We can get messages, we can post messages, we can increment the count for specific messages, and we can reset our messages. So we're going to do all of those different things in four different steps. So let's start, first start talking about getting messages. It's the easiest thing to do. So we'll put a, a button in. This will be our get messages button. I'm just going to rename it get messages and I'm going to rename the text for that the same. So when somebody presses that button we're going to put a label or have a label that will you know, report that text. So so I'm just going to call that message text. Uh, I meant to put that right here. All right, so I'm going to delete this. Okay, and the secret thing that we need here is connectivity. We're going to go down here on the left hand side and get a web connection. All right and we're ready to go to blocks and start adding our connectivity. So when somebody presses the get message button we're going to first create a URL so we'll go to web1 and scroll down and we're going to go all the way down here set URL. All right. So the URL that we're going to use is one that we have already created on the Hurlit website so I'm going to just take a quick pause right here and grab my URL. Hopefully by now you've already created one. Okay, so here I am on my Hurlit website uh, and I'm going to take my API. Yours will be different. I'm going to copy it and then head back to App Inventor. So now we're going to create a variable for our API. So I have initialized global variable. I'm going to name it API and I'm going to get an empty text box and I'll paste the, very, or the API that I just copied into it. So there it is. Oh, no, not new user. Sorry, mine's got a small problem. Alright, so that's mine. Uh, and when I want to get messages, I'm just going to take this API text. So I'll get this variable. And the next thing I'm going to do is go back to web and call get web one get. So this will send a message to the API that I want to get the text. The next thing that's going to happen is when the API gets back to the app with this got text, I'm going to change my message text to be this local variable response content. So that's it. That will make my response contact fill in when I press that button. So that's the first thing. It wasn't so hard. Okay, so now let's post messages. So if we want to post messages, we need a, a text box in order to write a message and we also need a button to, to cause it to post, right? So I'm going to go to layout, make these side by side. I think it'll be neater. So right there, I'm going to get a post button. I'll rename that post button and uh, rename this post as well and then I'll put my text box in there and back to blocks again okay so when we press the post button this time I'm going to create another URL this one is going to oops, this one's going to be slightly different. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go back to text, get to join, and I'm going to post, or I'm going to set the text to be the original API, and then I have to put um, the text question mark, text equals, in there. question mark text 
equals. And then, of course, I'm going to join it to the text box text that the person typed in before they pressed enter. And finally, I'm going to go back to web1. I'm going to call web1 post text. Now, I have to put text a text box right here, even though it doesn't do anything. I don't really know why it's there, but if I have it empty, it won't work. So. You don't have to type anything in it. It's just blank. Okay, so that will post the text. Wow, this is really easy. Okay, so let's make another one for incrementing text. So this is going to be pretty basic. I'll uh, take another vertical or horizontal arrangement and I'll have a button and I'm going to call it increment. And so we can get the numbers all sorts of ways. Um, I could have them, you know, we could put a text box in here and, and have the user type the number of the item they want to increment. I guess that's a reasonable way to do it. You know, we could do it all sorts of ways. Um, let's do it that way. And I'm going to set this to be numbers only. Okay, so off we go, back again. I'm going to just duplicate this because I'm lazy and I'm going to set this to forward slash increment got to spell it right question mark ID equals alright and so when they press this it's, it'll set the URL to be the original URL increment question mark ID equals and then whatever number they type there perfect so this is what this is the secret difference that changes it to an increment and finally uh, to do a reset so I'll make another layout horizontal arrangement I'll just keep going in the same way I'll rename this reset button And find I'll get another text box, put that in there next to it. And I'm going to set that to be numbers only again, because it can only be numbers. And I'll duplicate this once again and change it to be reset button. And so when somebody's going to reset, it's going to say reset question mark password equals and then they can type in their password that's it these four things will allow you to post text to the API get messages from the API um, increment items in the API and also reset the API that's all of it. So it's all ready to go, just like that. Now obviously we can add all kinds of other functionality to make it work better. We can um, cause it to, you know, do, do different things. And we can make all kinds of apps now based on this API. You could even, you know, make it so that the person types in their own account name in there. We could uh, get rid of some of this functionality so that you know every user can't do everything on here you know so if we were making a voting app or something like that we might not want them to be able to get the text or even post anything we might only want them to be able to increment things and this may you know go with a specific button so if I uh, this might be you know increment the first thing and so we might want to just hard code a number in there like number one and have another one for number two and so on or a variable to handle that somehow if it was a chat button we might not want or a chat app we might not want this at all we might only want to be able to post and get 
we also might not want to be able to reset. So we can do many different things with this. This is just a basic structure allowing us to use the app in a very basic, simple way. So what are you going to make?